Uh, today, if you have looked in your order of service and the insert, which I'm sure most of you have, will be Let It Be by the Beatles, played by our Chime Choir. Um, and I have to admit, growing up, although I, I like the Beatles, I have to say I really hated this song. <laughs> I was sort of the anti-Let It Be person. Right? I didn't want to let anything be. I didn't want to react to the violence that happened in my community with just let it be. I didn't want to react to the hopelessness and despair in the hearts of people with just let it be. I didn't want to react to what was being given to me as religious truth that I did not agree with with just let it be. I have to understand this was the 70s now. And as many of you know, and for those who don't, I'm more of a Bruce Springsteen kind of guy anyway. In Bruce Springsteen's song, Jungle Land, he wrote what I took to be actually a little diss of, of the Beatles, in which uh, he stated, and I'll, I'll just hum a few bars, um, outside the streets on fire and the real death walls, between what's flesh and what's fantasy. And the poets down here, they don't write nothing at all. They just sit around and let it all be. <laughs> so that was his little anti, they just let it all be. So this was written at a time of urban decay when there was diminishing public services, increasing poverty, heightened racial tensions, and the beginning of the war on drugs. Events that all seem to be reappearing in society today. And the streets were literally on fire. During 1977 World Series, uh, with Howard Cosell announcing the game, uh, the camera pans through the surrounding neighborhood of Yankee Stadium and shows buildings burning. And Cosell, in his uh, calm, nasal voice, I, I cannot do a good Howard Cosell. Um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the Bronx is burning. And when people live in that kind of chaotic environment, they want to determine what is real and what is illusion. And we tend to view the world only through the lens of our own experiences. So it is important for our lives, and yes, even for our congregation, uh, the life of our congregation, to be able to step back and look at our experiences and see what is driving our decisions. I didn't just want to sit back and let it be. I wanted to change the circumstances of my life, and I did. Or I should say the circumstances of my life gave me the opportunity to see the world in a different way. And each time that happened, I had to let go. I had to let go of old beliefs, of old biases, and old ways of being. And yes, there is a loss that comes with that. Loss is a part of our lives, all of our lives. In order to grow, sometimes we have to lose something. Sometimes we lose supposed friends when we decide to change how we're going to live our life. Sometimes we lose a job when we choose not to be silent about unethical behavior. Sometimes we even have to lose our way in order to find Sometimes we don't know how it's going to turn out. I wrote about this in my newsletter article this month when I talked about the time when I bungee jumped. Uh, the idea seemed good on the way up. But, <laughs> but when I had to pull the pin in order to jump, I actually had to pull the pin in order to jump, I, I hesitated. Uh, I knew it would be embarrassing not to go through with it, but I could live with embarrassment. Uh, what I couldn't live with was sort of the unknown of what would happen uh, when I pulled the pin. Right? I imagined the ropes would not work and I would just plummet to my death. Right? It was fear that, that was keeping me from pulling that pin. I had to trust that it would work out. And once I pulled that pin, it was an exhilarating a feeling of freedom, of one that I, I cannot even explain to you. I love, I love the picture, it was up at the beginning, I'll show it again here, of the trapeze artist. Um, 
You know, and, and unlike a bungee jumper, which, you know, when I did it, I did it myself. Of course, there were people who helped set it up, but I did it. The trapeze artist in this picture has to trust their fellow jumper. They know they can't get to the other side without leaving their trapeze. And they have to trust that the other person will catch them when they jump. And unlike the bungee jump in which I was strapped in with a cord, the trapeze jumper for a short time is in the air, in the void, in the in-between between letting go of something certain but limited and leaping towards something new. And sometimes we have to let go before we find the new thing. And it is in that in-between time that we have to have faith that the new trapeze will show up and that we will be caught by the fellow trapeze artists. And that can induce, that, that can induce fear and paralysis. But if we have the courage to explore the unknown, that in-between time can be a time of wonder and growth and transformation. As French author and Nobel Literature Prize winner André Schied wrote, one doesn't discover new lands without consenting to lose sight for a very long time of the shore." End quote. We, we are a community of seekers. We explore new understandings and new ways of being as new information becomes available to us. And new information is always available to us with each new experience that we have. And yet, despite being uh, progressive theologically, we are really very conservative and resistant to organizational change. Now, sometimes when you are in community and committed to uh, a community, in order to grow, we have to let go of our longing for how things always were. Whether that be how many services we have, or a certain kind of music, or a certain way of operating. And by letting go, we can find new ways of being that we could have never, ever imagined or realized before. And more importantly, we allow others as well then to find their way into our community. And so the title of the service today comes from a Zen proverb, let go or be dragged. Change is going to happen. It is inevitable. The question is, are we going to embrace it? And are we going to support it? Or are we going to be dragged, kicking and screaming? And if we are dragged, we slow down the inevitable. If we are dragged, we slow down and possibly damage the possibility of what could be. And if we are dragged, we will also drag others with us and prevent them and us from realizing our true and best selves. So I invite you to let go of the trapeze and live in that land of uncertainty. And let us as well be on the other end of the trapeze ready to catch each other and to make room for each other so everyone can find their way. And so with that in mind, I wondered as I came upon this service whether I could let go. Could I let go of my old interpretation of the song, Let It Be? And I did. In the lyrics it says, when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. Well, in fact, throughout the song, there is a constant refrain, there will be an answer. I always took it to mean the answer was, let it be. But as I listen to the song today, I hear there is hope. There will be an answer someday. And when we all come together, because we are all in some way broken hearted. And we all come together through all the differences and the darkness and uncertainty. That day, we will find our way. That day, we will shine in the darkness and take 
that leap of faith on the trapeze and give ourselves the opportunity to let our best future be. On that day, we will let it be so.